Yep. You guessed it. It's time for your rotten theology lesson. Howard's story was just beginning. He was about to embark on what is commonly referred to as a near-death experience. Thousands of people have described such episodes as warm and comforting, even heavenly. Howard Storm, on the other hand, believes his near-death experience took him straight to the depths of hell. What makes this story even more remarkable is that at the time Howard was an avowed atheist who believed in nothing. Not God, not heaven, and certainly not hell. And in that complete despair and pain and hopelessness, a small light appeared and got brighter and brighter and brighter. And I felt this brightness reach down and pick me up and I was like all healed and whole and full of the most wonderful physical ecstasy. And he called a number of angels around us and they showed me the effects that I had on other people, how I hurt other people. And I think to myself, I'm scum. I don't belong here. They've made a mistake. And then for the first time, he spoke to me and said, we don't make mistakes. You do belong here. Howard Storm's journey to the other side was over. He says a mysterious figure instructed him to return to Earth and live with love in his heart. When I asked all the questions that I could think of to ask, even making up questions just to perpetuate the fun of being <laughs> with Jesus and these people, because it was, it was like wonderful. I mean, getting all this attention, I'm getting all this information, and, I, and I've retained all that, uh, that whole thing. The most stressing thing to me... I just saw anything. I have no idea. No other has revolutionary attacking the validity of this NDE with a milk and water peplum. Useless questions he asked Jesus. He did not ask Jesus any real questions, which, if this Jesus would have answered, would have demonstrated that this Jesus was not a simple fabrication of his own mind. Why didn't he ask Jesus, Who was the Zodiac? Who is the Zodiac killer? Who is the Jeff the Ripper? What's the mystery behind the Bermuda Triangle? What causes spontaneous human combustion? What happened to the lost colony? Now, if he had, had asked his Jesus questions like this and gotten viable answers that could later be demonstrated to be correct, then I would know he had spoken to someone beyond the fabrications of even the deepest part of his sub subconscious. Sci they, they say the human mind is more vast than this universe. So the mind is capable of producing visions and meetings with Jesus, Muhammad, God, that seems so real. But deep down the mind, and the, deep down beneath the subconscious, the mind knows that it fabricated these experiences. Hence how some says it became an obsession with me to wonder where my, whether my experience with Jesus and his angels was real or the product brought on by the trauma of, the, of a dying brain. Make this holiday season magical. Uh, deep down inside he knows it's bullshit. He just don't know it. You get the fucking picture. You know why didn't Howard Storm interact? He said, he, he said in a video he was asking him every question he could think of. When I asked all the questions that I could think of to ask, even making up questions just to perpetuate the fun of being <laughs> with Jesus and these people, because it was, it was like wonderful. I'm mean, getting all this attention, I'm getting all this information, and, I, and I've retained all that, uh, that whole thing. Perhaps really, really offensive to me, how a storm. When I emailed, your HowardStorm.com website and ask you why didn't you ask questions like the questions like who was Jack who was Jack the Ripper you never never ever 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 I asked you twice I emailed you twice you never 
ever, 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 ever responded. If you responded to my other questions on your website, what, did I hit a raw nerve? You can't fabricate an answer to satisfy me when I start asking real questions that hit home, that drive like a stake to the core of your experience? Huh? Huh? Why? How to? Why in the fuck didn't you ask Jesus any real questions that would that would have demonstrated that this was not you were not forming answers out of your subconscious mind that you were actually getting answers from a consciousness outside of your consciousness. I'm pissed off because I so badly want to believe your story. I'm in your corner, Howard Storm, but you got to show me something real. I demand something real before I commit my life and everything I am to it. I'm not going to commit myself to something that ain't real. Uh uh, fuck that. I, right now, the realest thing I know is what I want, what I love. My dreams. What I want to love people. So long as in loving people, I love myself. And until I see something real, I will not change, you motherfucker. Why? How so? Believe it or not, I want your experience to be true more than anything. But you gotta show me something real. And the fact that you say that it became an obsession with you to wonder whether your experience with Jesus and his angels was real, that raises three red flags right there. Because let's face it, when a person gets saved, born again, he knows it. Deep in the innermost core of his being, there may be moments when that try make him doubt it, but this dying thing deep within, deep within, persists. Will not leave him alone, even if he backslides and wants to believe there is no Jesus. This, it, deep down, he knows it, and there is nothing that he can do to convince him that. No matter how hard he might try to convince himself that the inner reality that there is a Jesus, there's nothing that can make him believe that it's not true anymore. Because he has been born again in the spirit, in the innermost core of his being. How storm did your did your in the E touch? The deepest core of the being. I'm not talking about just your soul. Did it touch your spirit? The core of your being. Let me tell you something, motherfucker. If I ever have an NDE, and I've been given a chance to ask any question I could think of. And you said you, you, you asked questions until you were exhausted. Couldn't think of anything else to ask. Was you, you mean you never once heard about the Zodiac Killer and all about Jack the Ripper and wondered who it was? You never once wondered that? Look, bubs, if I get the chance to ask Jesus anything I want, if he sends me back, there's going to be a cure for AIDS. There's going to be a cure for cancer. There's going to be a cure for that Fatale Familial Syndrome, mad cow disease. It's going to be an alternative source for fuel. So that we ha don't have to depend on these gas nations. And I will come back 
with knowledge that will demonstrate that I have truly been in the presence of God as opposed to just had having had the, the deepest layers of my consciousness take control and fool me in thinking I was having a spiritual experience because the mind cannot comprehend the terror of final annihilation when it dies so it has to fabricate a beautiful heaven so it can ease its the mind in the, the final oblivion of death. It's all starting to make sense to me now. How storm we spit, spit, spit. The, perhaps the biggest red, red flag is when you say in more than one place when you doubted whether your experience with Jesus and his angels was real or brought on by the trauma of a dying mind. Interestingly enough, you never once questioned whether your experience in hell was real or not. In fact, you don't even like to think about it because it totally traumatizes you. So I think you got I think you got a hold of a counterfeit Christ. That another video on that. Ye shall know them by their fruits, Jesus said. Do men gather the grapes of figs or figs of thistles or something like that? Every time I have called you looking for a tiny little blueberry. It was like walking through a briar patch filled with thorn bushes. So by your fruits, Howard Storm, you are a false prophet. You are a false teacher. And if any Christmas half a theological it half a bit literally half a knowledge of the Bible reads your book must come to the conclusion that hey something's fucked up here something these the, the, this book and the bible do not go together like pieces of a puzzle i know that there is an interest in god in everyone even if they say they don't believe in god even with you yeah before and that, the event and there's a battle going on a raging on inside of them but i want i want to say something that in response to this Right, but don't believe you, don't believe Don, don't believe me, don't believe TBN, don't believe the church. Go to the source. If you go to the source, if you say, Jesus, I need you. I've never believed in you and I don't know if you're real, but Jesus, I need to know if you're real. Will you come into my life? If you do that, and if you mean it from your heart, and if you sit there and wait, and don't get all frustrated and get impatient and stuff like that, but just say, Jesus, Jesus, please come into my life. I've been a rotten person. And I don't know why you touch a piece of filth like me, but please, Jesus, come into my life, which is what I did. He will come. Yes. You know, it may not be. <laughs> Look how it's so him. I don't give a good goddamn how many other people you show love to. That gangster who you flew down to meet him to help him with his dying mother. Trying to work in the soup kitchen showing love to the homeless. I can only judge you by the love you show or do not, not show to me. As far as I'm concerned, Howard Storm, you have turned me off. You have made me turn my back on God and Jesus. How does it feel, hypocrite? You have filled me with hate. Because I so badly wanted to believe in your, that your God and Jesus was the real Jesus. What's the alternative? This? If this is how God and Jesus is, I'm turning my back on Him. Hope I, hope, hopefully I can come back 
right before I die and go to heaven because I don't want to go to hell. But me, give up what I love for a God like this, fuck that and fuck this God too. And fuck you three. How a storm is interestingly enough in Proverbs 14.12 it says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful. That means, even in your joy, when you're loving others, thinking you're doing service to Jesus Christ, there is a disquietness in your spirit, wondering, hey, I've heard other theologians, and they say stuff that is frightening, that is not like the Jesus I met in my NDE. How do I know that I didn't meet that my, the Jesus in my end of the Eve wasn't the product of my dying mind and that these theologians, how do I know that they're not spot on and that I have been slipped to counterfeit and that when I die, I'm going to find out I was wrong. Is that why every time, without fail, I've emailed you, asking you when you had a chance to ask Jesus every question you could think of. I asked, why didn't you ask him any real questions? Is that right why you don't answer him? Because it touches a nerve in you. Because you knew better than to ask him questions like, what happened to the lost colony? Who was Jack the Ripper? Who was the Zodiac killer? Killer. You knew better than asking questions like that because your sub the part of your mind that was creating, fabricating this experience wouldn't let came up with and wouldn't let you. It filtered up, filtered up a fear of asking such questions, of such presumptuous questions, because your subconscious knew it could not come up with a satisfactory answer to such questions as this. In closing, Howard Storm, I'm having a right migraine aura so my vision ain't worth a shit. Temporarily. Your, your, your subconscious and conscious level. Death is you cannot, nobody can, can comprehend the final the annihilation of death. And, death. and human beings are hardwired from the core of their being in their assembly language computer chip level of existence, consciousness, whatever, is wired to preserve the life of the organism as long as possible. And when you're dying, in order this computer chip mentality, the the symbol, the zeros and ones that make up you as a person, that that govern the rules by which your consciousness and subconsciousness that actually create. Your subconscious and conscious level creates created your conscious and subconscious levels in such a way to deny to fight death to the very bitter end. Even if there has to be some deception in it. But the knowledge in your assumed language mentality coming up into your subconscious levels is what causes your doubt as to whether you experienced this conversation with Jesus or whether it was a fabrication. Because it was for something from another consciousness Outside of your consciousness, interacting with your consciousness, it kept you from asking such questions. You know it. You would it have no doubt whatsoever. To give you a satisfactory 
answers to such questions. So and in order to maintain the deception, the fact that you did not, you said he want ask every Jesus every question you keep asking him the prolong your conversation with him as long as possible, and yet you did not ask any real questions. This is because your zeros and ones assembly language consciousness level consciousness, consciousness knew did not know, but this knowledge that it slowly didn't know the answers which human consciousness so you, there are, an obsession with you, with in, in human consciousness we know math in the subconscious level everybody could do complex calcul calculus equations. It's just that the conscious level cannot utilize a, open up enough windows from the subconscious to figure out how to do it. But even our deepest consciousness don't know the answers to some questions. These are the questions that you did not ask Jesus. Howard Storm, I'm angry at you. I'm angry that you didn't ask Jesus any real questions. I'm fucking angry at you. I'm fucking pissed it off for you. If you're really making sense, or since 